Today we're going to continue <clears throat> looking at sequences series and power series. We're going to continue to determine, try to determine if a series converges or diverges. That is, we're trying to determine when a sum is going to be finite. Our goal is to get to talk about power series, because these are generic descriptions of functions. These are polynomial descriptions of functions uh, that we can use as a sketch of a function. But when we plug numbers into a power series, we end up with a series. And we have to know if what we're looking at is a sum that makes sense, that is a sum that is finite. So let's list the things that we know about convergence of series. <clears throat> We know that if the limits as n goes to infinity of a n, if, oops, if the limit of the terms is not zero, then the series diverges. This is our necessary but not sufficient condition for convergence. And it's the first thing that we should check. If the terms don't go to zero, the series diverges and we're done. Next, we had the integral test. <clears throat> this is where we look at the terms of the series and make a, a continuous function out of them and look at the improper integral. If the improper integral converges, then the series converges. The important result of the integral test was P series. where the series one over n to the p converges for p strictly greater than one and diverges otherwise. So this gives us something that where it's easy to determine if a series converges or diverges. And it makes sense that this is tied to the integral test because we're looking at an antiderivative where we add one to the exponent. If p is greater than one and in the denominator, then when we add one to the exponent, the n is still in the denominator. So that, that, that when n goes to infinity, one over n goes to zero. So good result from the integral test. In general, we want to avoid integrating things because that could end up being a lot of work. So even though P-series seem very limited, it's a very small class of series, it is useful in the comparison tests. This is where we start to quantify what we mean when one series behaves like another series. So, the comparison tests uh, will make great use of P series. So this is what we mean when we say one series behaves like another series. So if we have something like n squared plus one over n to the fourth minus five, we don't care about the plus one and the minus five. We care about the n squared over n to the fourth and we see one over n squared and with that converges. So yesterday we added to this list with geometric series. So we looked at the sum of a finite geometric series and then we use that to find the sum of an infinite geometric series. So the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a times r to the n is a over one minus r if r is between zero and one. Actually, it's fine. We could, if the absolute value of r is between zero and one and diverges otherwise. So the diverges otherwise really is just 
in, in addition to the limit of the terms not being zero. Because if the common ratio in a geometric series is greater than one, then the terms of the geometric series don't go to zero. And so we're not even concerned about convergence. The interesting thing that we get from geometric series is that we get to know what the sum is. That's one of the fun parts of geometric series. And it's also the reason that I had to include n starts at zero and goes to infinity. So here we have the sum of an infinite geometric series. So for infinite geometric series, we get for a convergent geometric series, we actually get to know what the sum is. And it works out to a very simple formula, A, the first term over one minus R. Notice that it's A over one minus R for N starting off at zero. If we start off somewhere other than zero, then we have to use whatever the first term is. So for example, if we have the sum as N goes from five to infinity of A times R to the N, the first term is not A, the first term is a times r to the fifth. So we have a times r to the fifth over one minus r. It's the first term, not the coefficient. So the numerator in the sum is the first term, not the coefficient. So for geometric series, it's important to, to distinguish between the coefficient and the first term. Any questions? All right. So there's another, uh, for comparison test, uh, for the comparison test, remember there were two comparison tests. And for rational and radical functions, uh, the limit comparison test tends to be better. That's where we say one series behaves like another series. And there is um, kind of a, a niche case that I'm pretty sure was invented specifically to go after comparison test where you have to use the comparison test. So a strange series. I can't remember if this comes up on the homework or not. I always debate whether I should include this series because it's very strange, but let's include it here anyway. So let's consider the series, the sum as n goes from, let's start off at one to infinity of two plus sine of n over N. So first, let's see what our instinct is telling us. We got two plus the sine of N over N. Take a minute and just type in the chat whether you think this converges or diverges and then, and include why you think it converges. What's telling you this converges? What's telling you this diverges? Whatever you think it's doing. Let's take a moment, type in the chat whether you think this series converges or diverges. So is the numerator actually shrinking though? We've got two plus sine of n. Sine of n is just gonna oscillate. It's gonna go up and down. And when you say that the denominator is growing, 
that does indicate that as n goes to infinity, the limit of the terms will be zero. But if the limit of the terms is zero, that means the series could still diverge. So that's not strong evidence that the series converges. Also not strong evidence that the series diverges. We have another vote for converges. So oscillates to zero where you're still thinking in terms of the limit. It's true that the limit as n goes to infinity is equal to zero. Even though sine n is going to be oscillating, n is going to just grow and sine n is, is bounded by one above and negative one below. So we have another vote for converges. We've got a, third, uh, a first vote for diverges. So it is true, the limit of the terms is equal to zero, but that doesn't tell us that it converges or diverges. That just tell us, tells us that it has a chance to converge. So it is true, the limit of the terms It is true, the limit of the terms is equal to zero, but that doesn't mean that the series converges or diverges. That just means the series might converge. That just means that the series might converge. Anybody thinking diverge, what would be your reasoning why the series diverges. What's, tell, what's telling you is that the series diverge. It's okay if the answer is, well, you didn't say yes when someone said converge, so it must be diverge, right? But then you have to remember the context. Remember that in my off time, I am a dungeon master and the dungeon master said, never says, yes, that's the solution or no, that isn't the solution. I'm not here to come up, the dungeon master is not there to come up with your solutions. He's not here to solve your problems. He's here to solve your solutions. So the dungeon master is always going to be like, oh, well, yeah, we can try that. You never want to tell your players what you think the solution is. So let's think about what's going on. So the one over infinity and three over infinity, you're still just arguing from the limit of the terms being zero. And that is true, but the limit of the terms is equal to zero does not mean that a series converges. Remember, we're not just looking at the terms that the terms are going to zero, we're adding up all these values. And if we find the sum of those values, do we get converging? Do we get converges? When you said converges towards one over infinity, you're actually just calculating a limit and you're not using the word converges correctly. We wouldn't say, uh, a lot of times in English, we use, um, there's a lot of synonyms for things, but that doesn't really happen in math. So we would wanna say the limit converges. That's not how we, how we use the word converges. It gets the point across because we're all speaking English, but it's, it's not actually, mathematically meaningful. Let's take a look at what we know about sine of n. We know that sine of n is, uh, everybody's bringing up the, uh, pointing to the fact that sine n is oscillating. So that's an important piece of evidence. The sine of n will always be between negative one and one. Notice that I did not put less than or equal to in each of these. I left off the or equal to. I wonder why that is. So sine of n is always going to be between negative one and one. So you do make a good point in the one over infinity and the three over infinity. Since sine of n is always between negative one and one, that means that two plus sine n will always be between three and one.
So that is true. Two plus sine n is always gonna be between one and three. And if we divide everything by n, since n is positive, that doesn't change the relationship as long as we use the same n for all of them. So we know that two plus sine n over n is always gonna be less than three over n, and it's always gonna be greater than one over n. So what do we think is happening now? I've got two plus sine n over n bounded by one over n and three over n. That's an important thing to recognize. All three of these things go to zero. What does that mean? What converges? What reason do you have that it converges? Also, what is it? I see, I just talked about three things. The only it that's, in, that's on the table right now is this inequality and inequalities don't converge or diverge. And if you think I'm deliberately being difficult right now, that's correct because we're dealing with a very precise language. And so that means we probably shouldn't use the word it. And what is it that's telling us that's, that's indicating convergence to us? While you're thinking about that, one of the things that I should point out is that um, one of the things that's useful here, and, and the reason I didn't just put sine n over n is that this is bounded below by zero. So we're dealing with all these positive things. We have established that the limit of the terms is equal to zero. But that means the series might converge. If the limit of the terms wasn't zero, then we'd be done. We'd say that the series diverges and that's it. That's the end of it. But the limit of the terms is equal to zero. So the series might converge, but the series also might diverge. The harmonic series uh, diverges even though the limit of the terms is equal to zero. Let's think about this one for a minute. And look at a slightly different series. Let's suppose we have a series as n goes from one to infinity of two plus sine of n over n squared. First thing that we notice is that the limit of the terms is equal to zero. So the series might converge. We have the same stuff that we had before. So two plus sine n will be bounded above by three and below by one. And if we divide by n squared, that doesn't change. That doesn't change. Uh, the direction of the inequalities, and all these terms are still positive because we're plugging n starting at 1. So we have a similar similar set of evidence. We've got the zero, the, the, the terms of the series are bounded below by 1 over n, and above by three over n. Limit terms is zero, so it might converge. But then I put this example up there and said, well, what about this? 
to make us think about what, why, why might I have it? So now we have to start thinking of the meta. So once we have two examples, we can start meta thinking about the problem. And I'll just take this opportunity to reinforce the notion that it might be that they both converge and that I am just deliberately making you think about things. And then while you're thinking about it, I'll remind you that uh, I don't believe that uh, a lot of times I hear people in education say, well, we have to teach students how to think. And I don't think that it's possible to do that. I don't think we really understand how the human mind works in any kind of useful way that we can apply to make people, uh, to teach people how to think about a thing. I think all we can do is give you opportunities to do so. So the two plus sine n over n converges because it's greater than, greater than what? And what's uh, greater than zero? So why does that mean it converges? What test are you using to, well, we're not, uh, what test are you using to make that conclusion? What test will tell you that two plus sine n over n converges because it's greater than zero. What test are you using when you say that? Because we have a list. Uh, this is not a sequence. So the question says, do we call the sequence divergent because it never settles? No, it's not a sequence, it's a series. We're adding everything up. And uh, it does, uh, in, the, in the sense that it, do, it does settle in the sense that the limit of the terms is equal to zero. So for large values of n, it doesn't matter that sine n is, is going up and down erratically. We're taking some number between negative one and, or some number between one and three and dividing it by 10 billion that's gonna be very close to zero and three times zero is still just zero. So we're gonna, always gonna be as, always gonna be able to be as close to zero as we want. We can always be within epsilon of zero. As long as we make three over N within epsilon of zero, we will always be between zero. That's what we're trying to decide. It's a sum, we're adding things up. Are we adding things up so slowly that it levels off and we get a finite sum? Or even though we're adding up very small amounts, is the sum gonna to go to infinity? Like with the case of the harmonic series. So we've got lots of evidence. We know that the series might converge, but it might diverge. So the terms are between zero and zero because the limit of the terms is zero. So, but tell me about the sum. That's the question. Also, what is it? I'm gonna to have to assume that you, by it, you mean the limit. And then I can say, yes. But the sum of a bunch of zeros is not just zeros. The harmonic series diverges and the limit of the terms is equal to zero. It's always frustrating when I play this game because every time you say something, unless you say something perfectly, 
I'm always like, oh yeah, but what about this? And I just sit there and pick apart the things that you say. It's very frustrating. And I realize that I'm the villain here, so. But I mean, a lot of you are gonna, you're gonna be going to graduate school and you're gonna have to defend a thesis. And people are, and what that means is that people, uh, you're gonna have like your thesis advisor and, and people that are invested in you being successful and they're gonna sit there and do the same thing and the same thing to you that I'm doing to you right now. You're gonna sit there and pick apart everything that you say. And that's why you need to be prepared to have answers to all these things. So we have two series, two plus sine n over n and two plus sine n over n squared. We seem to have the same kind of setup. The limit of the terms of both is zero. And I can bound both above and below by a three over n and a one over n or a three over n squared and a one over n squared. Everything seems so similar. And also everything is positive. This everything is positive part is why I put the two plus sine n. So we're not going between some negative stuff and some positive stuff. Everything is positive. And we have established that the limit of the terms is equal to zero. But that only tells us that things might converge. If the limit of the terms is not zero, then the series definitely diverges. But if the limit of the terms is zero, the series might converge. And so these two series are in question. The big question is, has everybody figured out what question I am definitely not going to be answering today? And leave these as two open questions that we'll deal with tomorrow. And by we, I mean y'all. We've got a lot more series to go, um, or a lot more tests for series to go. And we've even got two different kinds of convergence. But before that happens tomorrow, uh, I'm going to need an answer to these two. I'm gonna need whether each of these series converges or diverges, and I'm gonna to need to know why. Remember, right now what we're doing is we're trying to apply a lot of, um, a lot of intuition to things. But when it comes to things like infinity, we have to stop playing the intuition game. We have to stop relying on our instincts because our human instincts around infinity are very bad. Human instincts around things like probability are very bad. So a lot of times we say, oh, well, just, just go with your gut, go with your instincts. But if you don't have a strong background in math, those instincts are very poor. That would be like me trying to ask uh, me to play basketball and just say, use your instincts with, for what to do. I have no basketball instincts because I don't play basketball on a regular basis. I don't study it on a regular basis. I can't pick up a saxophone and just say, hey, use your instincts because I have no training in the subject of saxophone. Does that make sense? Always be wary of people that say things like, well, it seems reasonable, right? Because that's, that's almost never good. If someone has to rely on what seems reasonable, then someone's trying to put something over on you. Or at the very least, you shouldn't trust that person's instincts because they clearly have established that they don't wanna study something. Does that make sense? I know it sounds like I kind of insulted you, but it's, it's just a statement of facts. 
which is why I immediately turned it on myself with the basketball thing. I am very bad at basketball. I have no instinct about how it's supposed to go. We didn't have video as much back then, but in high school, I started playing water polo. And it's very much like just basketball in, with six people and with swimming instead of running. But it's got similar kinds of, similar kinds of things. So, and I could not figure out how everybody around me could just know what they're supposed to do. I had no instinct for it. And then when it was explained to me a couple of times, I still had no instinct for it. It just didn't make sense. When you, when I started drawing things and started figure, I could figure out how things are supposed to go and I could picture it in my mind, but I could not take that and apply it to when I was actually swimming around in the pool. And the only reason I was even mildly successful at it was I was a pretty good swimmer. So I could out swim most of the people that we were up against. Never got good at it. Similarly, basketball, I don't have good instincts for it. Saxophone, I don't have good instincts for it. Similarly, training dogs. A lot of people will get a dog, but training a dog requires training on the, on the handler's part. You don't just know how to do it. You need to learn how to do it. And that's what we're working on now. And that's why I'm definitely not answering these questions. So we've established that the terms go to zero. So each of these series might converge. We've established bounds on the series, but we don't know how to use that yet. So we don't know how to use that yet. We don't know what we might use to help us take this information. We don't have instincts and experience. We don't have something to compare what we're doing to. <clears throat> all right, that's gonna do it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow and we're not gonna make any progress until you are able to answer these questions. So everybody have a good day. I'll see you all tomorrow and thanks for playing.